Hello there, Ray here, and guys, I have this weird fly machine I would like to show you guys, which is able to move forward when you're in this location, but if you move over over here, the machine turns off. You can kind of see how it works. There's a minecart touching a detector rail, and if the minecart moves, then the machine no longer runs. A while back, Pi314 made a similar flying machine where we had a minecart and a player would be able to hop in it and move back and forth and start as well as stop the flying machine. It's pretty large, but why would you even want to have a minecart and rails on a flying machine? It's because it's one of the only ways you can get an entity to interact with a flying machine to stop it. If you look in the redstone component on the creative menu, there is quite a few different redstone components, but very few of them can actually interact with entities. And ones that can are like trip wires or like pressure plates, which cannot actually be moved with flying machines. But rails can be moved and they can have an entity, the minecart, interact with the power rail, allowing you to turn on or off the flying machine. And in the recent versions, like, and in the recent 1.16 snapshot, they had a target block, which is also a block that can interact with entities and affect flying machines. If you guys haven't seen it already, we made a couple different flying machines that will constantly fly until somebody accidentally picks up the arrow that's on the flying machine. If you haven't seen it already, I'll link them down below. Probably one of the best advantages of having a flying machine like this is that you can easily start and stop your flying machine. If you guys ever built flying machines in survival mode and tried flying them, it becomes very difficult to actually stop them where you want them. Oftentimes you find yourself spamming down like redstone blocks hoping that you stop the flying machine. And in general, it's difficult to stay on a flying machine unless you're riding another entity like a minecart or a boat because often the player clips through blocks on servers and you end up falling off your flying machine. There's quite a few advantages to having a flying machine like this. And one day we were working on a lot of different query stuff here on our testing world and we kind of got bored. So we we're goofing off thinking if we could possibly compact his flying machine down and we came up with a couple different designs. And this is one that I came up with. And the objective is to have it so that when the player is on one side with a minecart, the machine doesn't fly. But when the minecart's on the other side, the machine does fly. Now, at first, this seems like a pretty easy thing to do on a flying machine, except there is Quite a few problems that we ran into. Minecarts act very bizarre when they get pushed. Rails act very bizarre when they get pushed. And this combination made it extremely difficult to compact this. And you're also limited to pistons only able to push 12 blocks at a time. So this design that I got here is actually only two segments. There's a pushing segment and there's also a pulling segment. Therefore making this the smallest type of fly machine, which is a two segment fly machine. Now when it comes to moving rails, that is also very tricky to do. You can see that we actually have the rails here being pulled by this front segment and they're being pulled at the same Y level as the rails. So this piston is the same Y level as these rails. This is actually important. So if I would happen to try to push some rails from below or at the same Y level, so I'll put rails there and if I push them like this, you will see that the rails will actually pop off. And if I would put rails here, and then I would put a piston in here, and push from this location, you can see they also pop off. But notice if I would go ahead and put blocks here and then push it from above, so if we have a piston right up here and push it, some of the rails pop off. Notice this one does not pop off because it has a back piece to it. So if we have a back rail for this and we push the rails, you can see they stay put. And if we come in here and push from this location, you can see they pop off. So it has to do with update order and which blocks the game thinks move first. So in this case, when pushing from down here, the game thinks that this block moves first. Therefore, there's no support for the rail that was here and the rail pops off. Now the update in which pistons push blocks has changed throughout the versions. But usually the farthest block away from the piston starts moving first and then it works backwards until it meets the piston. And Myro Eerie has a good video explaining how the game does updates and pushing of blocks. So we're able to overcome this rail issue by pulling the rails and they still feel like they are securely held in so they won't pop off. If I just remove this piston and you see that I push this one forward you see this all moves forward just fine and the rails don't pop off. The next problem is the minecart itself. If you ever notice, minecarts are pretty weird, especially when they're trying to move on a fly machine. Notice how I want to hop into this minecart and I push this direction. I can kind of clip into this piston right here. Uh, that's not what you want because if I keep pushing forward, I can actually fall out of the fly machine 
and hit the ground. So minecarts can easily clip through blocks, especially when they're moving. And we can avoid players doing that just by pushing briefly to the side. That way you're barely moving over to the piston. And that way when you bump into it, you actually align with it rather than clipping through it. And same thing if I go this direction. If there was not, if there was the, if these blocks weren't here and I would push this way. And also my minecart will keep moving this direction and I can easily fall off the edge. But there's actually even more problems to try to overcome. Because when minecarts are being pushed and there is slime behind them, they can also kind of get launched. Another weird thing that occurs in this version is rails actually can change direction when moved. So if I power this, notice how this rail was sideways and now it's pointing straight with it. If I have a minecart on this and then power it, you see the minecart gets launched off the edge. Notice when the rail is turned sideways and I power it, the minecart doesn't get launched forward, but instead it gets launched off to this side. But if we would come in here and just move this forward a little bit and put in a block right here, put a minecart in here and then power it, you can see the minecart does not get pushed by this slime block. This is another reason why we don't have any slime sitting behind this on the backside pushing it instead we're pulling it. We also had to overcome push limits. So if I just go ahead and remove this piston here and push this segment forward with this piston attached to it, you can see that there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven blocks that it's trying to push. So twelve is the maximum. We're currently at eleven. Now when this piston is trying to pull, he has to pull all this segment here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So they're both almost at maximum push limit. I have to go ahead and bring these two segments back together again. You can see it is very compact being a four by four, only two blocks tall. And we have terracotta on this side just so that it can move forward without sticking to any other slime pieces. Now though this looks really small, there's actually other ways to overcome the problem. And smoking in with this design here, instead of having it when the minecart is over top of the detector rail, it starts it. He has it so that when it's on top of it, it turns it off. This has some advantages as when the minecart is over here, the machine is just going to fly like a normal flying machine where it's constantly going forward. And only when the player actually moves the minecart over here closer to the piston, is it going to stop. And this is done because the detector rail is now powering this piston, so it's unable to pull the segment forward. The disadvantage to this design is that if you don't have any minecart in the system altogether, the machine is just going to keep going on and flying. Where my design only goes forward if there is a minecart in the system. The rest of this is just to prevent the minecart from getting pushed out. So we got blocks on this side as well as a fence on this side. So you move back and forth, you don't just shoot off the edge here. But can either of these designs be made smaller in newer versions since we have stuff like honey blocks? And thanks for all the support you guys have been showing me recently. We're really close to reaching 100,000 subscribers, which is just so crazy to think about. So if you guys haven't subscribed already, make sure you go ahead and do that. Because currently less than 30% of you guys are subscribed. And it doesn't cost you anything to hit the subscribe button. So this is the version that I went ahead and made. And it's quite a bit smaller than the other ones. But it has pretty much all the same characteristics of them. Uh, we almost got a basic flying machine just here. There's six blocks. So observer slime piston and this side is observer slime piston that's the smallest flying machine you got there and then we just have this extension which is both types of rails detector here normal rail here minecart and we got a little piece to hold the rails as well as support them in the back and we have a fence in the front just so you don't fly off of this when you're trying to move forward i'll show you guys how to run this so right now it's currently off because this minecart is over top detector rail which is powering this piston preventing it from moving forward as soon as I hop into minecart and I go backwards, let's see, it's going to take off. It's taken off now, flying. Pretty small. Now all I have to do to stop it is go forward. Now it's not instantly going to stop when I move forward. You have to really kind of fight it. Just keep pushing forward. Eventually minecart will get over here in order to stop it. But it does work. You can go both directions. Start and stop it. Which is pretty insane for such a small flying machine. And you really don't need any honey blocks as well. You could do this in older versions or you can actually put a honey block right here and it'll work exactly the same. But you can't put rails on top of honey blocks so they aren't useful in that sort of situation. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this flying machine and if you have any suggestions on how this could be used in other flying machines. If you'd like to see more simple machines and farms like this for your survival world, I have a whole playlist you guys can binge watch, which you can find linked below. Don't forget to go ahead and share this with other Minecrafters so they can learn about cool uses for fly machines, as well as leave a like on the video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.